jQuery will help you build your dot com. Find an element inside of the DOM. Ajax traversal manipulation, event handling, and animation. Providing you with versatility, an API with extensibility. jQuery is something you can ignore. Write less, do more. I'm Greg Pollock and you're watching Try jQuery. This course should take you about three hours to get through. It's going to start with a bunch of videos and following each video you're going to have a code challenge in the browser where you actually have to prove that you understood what you just learned. After you get each question right you're going to earn points and then at the end of each level you're going to earn a badge finally earning the course badge which will be displayed in your code school profile. In order to take this course, you need to be familiar with HTML, which is how we create content inside web pages, CSS, which is how we style that content, and maybe a little bit of JavaScript. But if you're not familiar with JavaScript yet, don't worry, we'll be going over it as we go through the tutorial. Now before we start looking at code, we need to make sure everybody knows what jQuery is and what it can do. Here's a few examples at Code School. When somebody clicks the login button on Code School, the login form appears and can disappear once they click that again. Over on the Code School payment page, people can select between paying yearly and monthly, and the price is updated accordingly. Also in this page, we can toggle different CSS classes based on which button somebody presses, as you can see here. Five common ways you might use jQuery include finding elements on an HTML document, changing that HTML content, listening to what a user does and reacting accordingly, like when they press a button, animating content on the page, and talking over the network. So if you want to communicate with the server without having to refresh a whole browser page, you can do that with jQuery. Here's some HTML from a web page. You can see here it has a title, an h1, and a paragraph. And our objective is to modify the h1 element using jQuery. To do this, we first need to find this element, and then we need to change it. So how can we write some jQuery to find that h1 inside of our HTML? Well, in order to do that, we need to understand a little bit better how our browser organizes the HTML it receives. It does this in something called the document object model. This is kind of a tree-like structure created by browsers so we can quickly find HTML elements using JavaScript. In this tutorial, we'll refer to the document object model as the DOM. When we go to a URL and our browser starts receiving HTML from that web page, it loads it piece by piece into the DOM, like so. As it receives each element, it starts building nodes inside of our DOM. So here you can see it has an HTML node, which is underneath the document node. You might say HTML is a child of the document node, and the document is the parent of the HTML node. Then we have a head node, then underneath that a title node, and that title of jQuery Adventures, we're going to call that a text node, which lives underneath title. Then we have the body node, which is a sibling to the head node. Underneath that is an h1 node with a text element of where do you want to go. And then lastly, we have a paragraph node, which also has a text node under it. In order to interact with the DOM, all browsers use JavaScript. That's the standard language that gives developers a way to interact with our DOM. So here we have a web server. It has a JavaScript file. It also has some HTML files on it as well. Over on the other side, we have our web browser. The web browser might request a web page by going to a URL. The web server is going to send back the HTML you requested, along with any other files needed to load that page, including, in this case, some JavaScript. The web browser is then going to load that HTML into the DOM, and then once loaded, we can execute the JavaScript that was sent over to interact with the DOM. So you might be wondering, why don't we use JavaScript to interact with every browser? Why do we even need jQuery? Well, the catch here is that each browser has a slightly different DOM interface. 
This is where jQuery comes in, so you can write one piece of code which can communicate with all modern web browsers. In order to access the DOM using jQuery, we'll put some code inside of this jQuery function you see here. To access the DOM using jQuery, all we need to do is specify the document keyword you see here. But how can we search through the DOM and find that h1 element we were looking for? To figure this out, let's jump back into our HTML, and we need to think a little bit about how we would use CSS to decorate this web page. If we wanted to decorate the h1, we might write a CSS selector which looks like this. In this case, it's increasing the font size of the h1. To make the paragraph font color blue, we would specify p, curly braces, color, blue. We use these same CSS selectors to find elements from inside the DOM. So if we wanted to find the h1, we could simply specify jQuery h1. Notice that h1 is wrapped in a string with two double quotation marks. To find the paragraph in the DOM, we could simply write jQuery p. There's a shorter way we can write this code. Instead of specifying jQuery, we can simply use the dollar sign. It's going to mean the same thing. So now we know how to find the h1 using that dollar sign h1, but how do we modify that element? So remember, this is our DOM representation of this HTML. To find the h1, as we saw a minute ago, we simply write dollar sign h1, and that returns the h1 element. If we wanted to return the text inside that h1, we would simply call the text method, like you see here. It would return, where do you want to go? In order to modify the element's text, we can simply send a string into this text method. Here, when we send where to, you can see that it replaces that text element in the DOM with where to. And if we were watching this web page in our browser, we would see the page get updated. Now, there's one thing you need to be wary of when you're running jQuery that interacts with the DOM. The HTML might be getting sent over to your browser, and that JavaScript might fire off before the DOM is done loading. In this case, the DOM hadn't finished loading yet, and so when it went to change the text in the h1, it didn't work. So we need to make sure the DOM is finished loading before we try to interact with any HTML on the page. It turns out that when the DOM is finished loading, it triggers an event. It says, I'm ready. So we need to be listening for that signal, and we only want our jQuery code to run once that DOM ready event has been triggered. The code looks something like this. We write jQuery document ready, and then we have a function. And anything inside of that function is only going to get run once the document is ready. So our completed code, while we're fetching the h1 and then changing the text element, is going to look something like this. We're waiting until the document is ready, and then we're fetching the h1 and then changing the text node. Before we get into the challenges, let's take a quick tour of the challenge interface. Over on the left side of the screen is our table of contents, showing us six levels. When we're in each level, we can see the different sections of the level and little buttons. The play buttons represent a video, and the prompt buttons represent a code challenge. You're more than welcome to jump around between level sections and challenges. Down below, we have a download button to grab all the slides for the course, which can be really useful if you want to put them on a second monitor for reference. Also at the bottom here, we'll see listed our total number of points and the progress bar to see how much we've completed. The table of contents is useful for navigation, but if you want to get yourself a little more screen room, you might want to minimize it. On the right side of the page, we can see the challenge title and text. Sometimes a challenge will link to external jQuery documentation, as you can see here. We then see the rendered HTML page we'll be interacting with using jQuery, and below that, the HTML source of the page. Notice this HTML has a lock next to it, meaning that you're not going to be able to edit it. At the bottom of the page, you'll see our JavaScript console. This is where you'll want to start coding, and in the first few challenges, you'll practice using selectors. Notice how when I type div, the div HTML is highlighted in the source. Similarly, if I type p to select the paragraph, I can visualize the selection, and if I scroll up a little, we'll see the paragraph element in the rendered HTML is highlighted as well to help us solve the challenge. If you need reference to the slides and you don't already have them downloaded, you can view them here in the slide tab, and if you get stuck at any point, you can always ask for a hint in the hint tab. 
Hints are free, but if you want to show the answer, it'll cost you 75 points off your score. Next, I want to call your attention to this little split-screen button on the right side here. If your monitor is big enough, this allows you to view both the source code and the slides at the same time. Let's go ahead and solve this challenge by typing in the right answer in the console and hitting Enter or Return. Awesome! Now we can continue on to the next challenge by clicking the Continue button or hitting Alt Return or Option Return. Here's an example of a challenge later in the course which doesn't use the console, and instead we need to write a couple lines of jQuery on the editor which is no longer locked. To submit the code, we just hit the Submit button on the bottom right. On these challenges, you'll probably want to make sure you go split-screen so you can see both the JavaScript and the HTML source at the same time. Alright, well it's time for you to get your hands dirty in the challenges, and I'll see you in the next video.